Well, hello again, YouTube. I'm here to do a little video on a knife that I really like. This is called a GAK, or a German Army Knife. It's made by Victorinox, and I think it was adopted in 2003. And before then, uh, the German Army had a slip joint. That's a pretty cool little knife, too. You should check it out. Also made by Victorinox, and I think there were some other contractors. Um, as you can see, the German Eagle here, it's called a Bundweiser. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm pretty sure I'm not. But, uh, you know, doing the best I can. I got this, uh, I guess a couple of years ago, and I have never done a video on it, so I'm doing it right now. Uh, but I love this knife. Um, I've used it, you know, to go camping go hiking. I've used it just messing around out in the desert, which is what we do here. Uh, lighting fires and cooking fajitas over the grill out in the middle of nowhere. And this knife has served many purposes. Um, as you can see, it has a screwdriver. A really good screwdriver. I'm going to open that up for you. That's a really good screwdriver. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to hold it in a T-handle fashion. I kind of like the ones that are out on the side, and then I kind of don't. It's uh, it's kind of a thing. Uh, but anyway, it's a really good screwdriver. It really takes a bite on the uh, Phillips head that you're trying to get a hold of. And you have... I may open this up. Sorry, I'll do it off camera. You got you the ubiquitous awl or hole punch. Uh, this is a really great tool. Not just for making holes and belts, but... If you want to, uh, you know, start holes in anything wood or whatever, this is really, really good. Uh, you'll notice that unlike some other awls, this one doesn't have a sewing eye. It's just a straight awl. And I'll show you this, and then we'll show you the main blade. Here's the main blade, and this is kind of interesting, one-handed opening here. But you'll notice that it is serrated. But look where the serrations are. They're more toward the front, leaving you... Uh, the straight edge position right back here. Um, there has been some experts, and I don't know who's an expert, but they say that it's better to have the serrations up front and have this back here where you can do your finer tasks. Uh, I do know that this knife is razor sharp. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, it works really, really good. Man, it's a mirror finish on there. And haven't had any problem cutting anything I want. It has not gone dull. If you get a Spyderco sharp maker, these serrations are really, really easy to sharpen. And you can see their chisel uh, ground. You know, it's not ground on that side, but ground on this side, the little scallops. And they're really pretty easy to sharpen. And the good thing is they stay sharp because the sharp edge is down in this little ravine. And these little nubs right here kind of tear through the stuff but keep your edge sharp so uh that's that let's see what else we got on here sorry i'm doing it off camera and you have the famous victorinox saw and let me tell you this saw works really really well i've used it for all kinds of stuff it is sharp it is aggressive you see those uh, notches in there it cuts both ways going and coming and it really makes handy work now you're not going to build a house or something with it but if you're out in the field and you're trying to build a quick shelter or you're trying to make tent pole stakes or you know any number of things it is a fantastic tool you'll also notice the lock right here and there is a lock for uh, the other tools as well now the saw doesn't lock that's just a function of the saw but it's pretty stout and you're not gonna close it on yourself and sorry i'm doing this off camera here we're gonna show you another tool that's pretty common on victorinox you have the bottle opener slash screwdriver slash i guess that's a wire stripper uh what i have found this little notch for is if you go fishing i'm sure there's quite a few fishermen watching it makes it a little easier to run your string through the eye hole in the hook you just you know put relax the string on this notch and then line up the hole and gently push it it seems to make it a lot easier that's just a little lanyard i put on there um 
and I'll show you the lock here if I can do it. The locks, I got to do it off, off camera. I'm sorry. The lock's kind of weird as it goes backwards. That's kind of hard to explain. Uh, but the last tool on this device is, sorry, I'm doing it off camera here again, is the famous Victorinox can opener. Uh, it's also got a little screwdriver at the end, a little flathead, or it could be used as a Phillips. And you'll notice the way the edge is on this can opener. Uh, I've showed this on other Victorinox videos. It's good you go forward when you make your cuts instead of going backwards. Uh, and that's just the way it seems to be the European can openers are. Um, like I said, this knife was adopted, I think, back in 2003 by the German military. And uh, I think they issued it to all of their soldiers. I was in the Army, and I'll do a video on it too, but I got a little uh, what they call a milk knife or a military knife, and it, it's uh, made by Camelus. And uh, that's a whole other story, but that was that's our version of the... Of the uh, military issue knife uh i at that time i bought myself a buck knife at the px just because i like buck knives they're really good um but now looking back that that uh, milk knife or demo knife as it's called really was pretty handy but if we got something like this i just think this is really cool and supposedly well not supposedly there is there's a knife like this that's marked us on the handle and while it's not regularly issued to troops, uh, it does have an NSN number. It seems like quite a bit of stuff has an NSN number. That stands for National Stock Number, and it just means your commander or whoever's in charge can order it through military channels. Uh, there's a guy named Tobias Gibson that does really good reviews on the history of this knife and the military knife made by Camelus and some other knives, and he... Uh, I recommend if you want to know some really detailed stuff, you go and watch some of his videos because he really gets into the nitty gritty of all of all that stuff. And when I got this knife, it came with this case. Uh, it's a real nice little case. Doesn't have pouches on the side. It's just a plain case. And if I could describe the material, it is, I guess, some kind of waterproof impregnation over. What I assume is plastic or, or something. I don't know. But it's a really sturdy case. It's uh, waterproof. And it's a, it's a good way to carry the knife. And it's uh, molly compatible. Um, I don't know if they all come with this sheath. Or if uh, they issue it with that. Or if you got to buy that separately. But anyway, it's a great knife. Uh, I don't know the weight. I, I'm not one of these people that list every spec of a knife. But... If you're familiar with the one hand trekker, it's essentially the exact same knife, except you don't have a toothpick and you don't have tweezers, uh, which you could probably get by without those. Uh, you got a good knife, you can make you a toothpick out of a stick, and the tweezers, I don't know, you dig it out with your knife blade. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the way the knife comes. These handles are some kind of textured polymer or plastic and they are very sturdy and uh, this is just a great knife it uh, like the swiss knives in general it's very utilitarian um it's much larger than a like a swiss champ or something like that as far as the blade goes and uh, so you get a lot more utility out of it and a good saw and a good blade and a couple of good screwdrivers you can get yourself out of most things uh some people say you have to have a pair of pliers, and that's the whole Leatherman uh, argument, is a good pair of pliers are indispensable, maybe. Or maybe you could just throw a pair of pliers in your bag or pocket somewhere and just get by with something like this. But if you were going to go hike, and uh, you know, I go hiking, or camping, or anything outdoors, or just in the city even, whatever, this knife would serve you very well. From food prep to maintaining stuff, keeping the screws tight on your gun, you know, whatever. It's a really good knife. Uh, it'll last you. It'll stay sharp. And that's a good thing about serrations. That's why one of the reasons why the military uses serrated knives is the fact that 
when other knives go dull, a serrated knife will still continue to cut way past their uh, way past their their dull time. If that makes sense, it's a bad way to put it, but they will continue to cut uh, when other straight edge knives don't. They won't cut as good. They won't cut as fine, but they will cut. And you'd be amazed at how many really good cuts you can get with these serrations. Uh, it's not a hindrance. Some people say it is, but it's really it's really not a hindrance to to cutting uh, with this knife. Uh, you don't really notice it that much. I guess if you're making really really fine cuts. You might notice it, and if you needed to make those kind of cuts, well, you could put your, you know, a really small pen knife in your pocket, and you'd be covered that way. But pretty much, you could take this knife out in the field, and you'd be fine uh, with with it exactly as it sits. Anyway, that's my quick review of the Victorinox German Army knife. Um, if you were to ask me if I recommend it, absolutely, I'd say this. And a little flashlight, a little streamlight, a little O light, whatever, and you'd be equipped to get yourself out of most things. Not everything, but most things. And you could throw you a, a couple little tools in your truck or whatever you think you might need for the mission or the outing, and you'd be set. Anyway, that's my review. Uh, I always hear guys say this, you know, give it a like and a thumbs up. I'm not really sure what that does, but. Uh, if you like it, I guess give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Anyhow, that's my take on the German Army Knife. I hope you like it, and uh, we will catch you down the road.